Okay, good evening, councillors, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Cabinet meeting of the 2nd of December. So we'll go straight into the agenda. Uh, apologies for absence. We have received apologies from Councillor Rob Pritchard, who is on annual leave. Item two on the agenda are the minutes of the last meeting. Is it your wish I sign those as a true record? Uh, Councillor Farrell uh, has proposed to have a seconder. Councillor Bailey seconds. All in favour? Thank you very much. Consider those as a signed record, please. Uh, agenda item three, uh, declarations of interests. I've not been aware of any. Does anybody have any interest to declare? Okay. Uh, just to clarify on that, uh, we do have the uh, base budget forecast on the agenda. Uh, and just to clarify to the public, as we are council taxpayers, but also part of the council, we do not need to declare an interest because we are dealing with it in the same way as any member of the public would. Uh, so, item four on the agenda is question time. This evening we do not have any questions from members of the public, uh, so we'll move straight on to item five, and that is matters referred to Cabinet in accordance with overview and scrutiny procedure rules. Uh, this evening, uh, the Infrastructure Safety and Growth uh, Scrutiny Committee has a couple of recommendations. One we will deal with as part of an agenda item, uh, but the other one we will deal with now. Uh, Councillor Goodall, the chairman of that committee, cannot be with us, uh, so the vice chairman, Councillor Clements, uh, is with us this evening. So, Councillor Clements, would you like to give us your uh, uh, the scrutiny committee's recommendation on the dry recycling? Thank you, uh, Chair. Um, at the meeting that we held, um, it was the recommendation was for Cabinet to take note of the need for all areas of council activity to be looking for opportunities to move green uh, noting as an uh, this as an example of an area um, and basically it was about the uh, looking at um, the recycling trucks uh, the new five recycling trucks are currently diesel and we've not looked at EV chargers due to the fact that uh, EV charging tr EV trucks are still quite new and they're not compatible with how we want to do recycling at the current present time. Um, so that's the re that's the recommendation for that item, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Clements. Does anybody on Cabinet want to respond to that recommendation from scrutiny? Councillor Daniel Cook. Yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, as portfolio of for waste management, happy to respond to that. Um, obviously, um, hope I can speak for all colleagues on Cabinet here. Um, we, we welcome any ideas and opportunities to uh, obviously uh, create an environment for this council to be net neutral on our carbon emissions and anything we can do to obviously promote a green, cleaner, greener agenda. I don't need to go into the amount of nature reserves we have in Tamworth with our trees, etc. We are an incredibly green town. But uh, just remaining on waste management, uh, we do actually run an incredibly effective, incredibly green compared to some councillors' waste management service. Uh, to give you a few highlights, obviously councillors will be aware we uh, joined up in a joint service with Litchfield in 2009-10, which massively reduced the number of trucks uh, that were required because the routes were now cross-border and more effective. So we did have a massive reduction in the amount of fuel used. Uh, obviously, all waste in Staffordshire uh, goes to waste a heat plant at Four Ashes, which basically means nothing is buried anymore, nothing goes to landfill, which is an incredible achievement for Staffordshire. Even emissions are kept low from the plant. It's actually so effective that even the ash at the plant is turned into tarmac to be used on roads, so nothing is actually wasted. Uh, we do pr push the uh, green waste uh, collections. Uh, we do have good sign-up rates across Tamworth and Litchfield uh, to compost um, garden waste, which again is incredibly effective, incredibly good for the environment. So, uh, I'll obviously take the point on, we will look for all opportunities going forward to run the cleanest, greenest service we can across waste management and I hope across all elements of the council. We are fundamentally aware that at the moment uh, there isn't an electric bin truck that would effectively do the job we need it to do. The technology hasn't got there yet. I'm sure it will over coming years, maybe the next decade, and when those opportunities come around, I'm sure this council will be happy to look into, is it effective use of taxpayers' money to get those electric vehicles? So yeah, uh, wel welcome the comment, wel welcome what's being requested, and obviously from, I hope, from all areas of the council, we'll look for every opportunity to get our emissions ca carbon neutral. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Any other comments from members of Cabinet? Okay, I believe there is a single local authority in the UK that does use electric vehicles for their waste collections. 
uh, but uh, they're, they're significantly different to the to the operation that we run in. It's quite a, a small area, but I don't have the the, the full details. Um, okay, so if there's no further comments uh, for, from cabinet, the the recommendation that Councillor Clements gave us uh, was to ensure that we consider uh, the green agenda in all areas, and the waste management was a, was an example of that, wasn't it? If I'm correct. Yes, Chair. The, the other thing I was going to add, sorry, Danny, was that the was the fact that the bags that we're going to be now using for dual streaming are not made in this country. Um, so that was a bit of a no, nobody tendered in this country. So they're coming from abroad. That was the only other comment, Chair. Thank you. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, no, thank you for that, Councillor Clements. Um, so if I can. Uh, if I can support the, recommenda uh, the suggestions that scrutiny have, have given us and actually move uh, that Cabinet acknowledges uh, the feelings of the Scrutiny Committee uh, and commits to looking at, uh, so to considering the Green Agenda uh, in all our decision making in all areas going forward. Uh, so if I can move that as a motion based on Scrutiny's recommendation, could I get a seconder? Councillor Cook, all those in favour? That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Councillor Clements, on that one. Uh, we will now move on to, if you can hold your next recommendation, we will now move on to uh, the, 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 the full agenda in terms of substantive items. Uh, as Councillor Clements is here and Infrastructure Safety and Growth have a recommendation that relates to item 16 of the agenda, uh, I'm going to suggest that we actually move that uh, up the agenda to... Uh, uh, before we take item six, uh, so we will now consider infrastructure funding statement, which is Councillor Doyle's paper, and then we'll go back to Councillor Clements for for her recommendation and input. So, Councillor Doyle, could you lead us into item sixteen, please? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, I'd like to thank Richard Powell uh, for the work put into this report by himself and the team. The purpose of this report is to inform our Cabinet on the recommendations to the Spending of Community Infrastructure Levy, or SIL, income and the publication of the Infrastructure Funding Statement. I'd like to quickly offer a brief history. The SIL was adopted at a full council meeting held on the July 2018 and came into effect on August of 2018. Also that the basis for the administration of SIL was brought before Cabinet in April of this year. Briefly, Cabinet supported the following recommendations. 5% of SIL income would be retained by the Council and applied to administrative expenses associated with SIL. Also, the Council retained the strategic elements and allocated funds to one or more infrastructure projects in the borough. And as well, a regeneration projects within Tamworth be set as the priority for spending for the strategic elements of SIL. The purpose of tonight's paper is a review of the largely factual report for infrastructure funding for 2020-2021. The Council has a requirement to produce an annual infrastructure funding statement to give communities a better understanding of how developer contributions have been used to deliver infrastructure in their area. A copy of, of the draft uh, IFS report is included in Appendix A and contains the details around the expenditure. So I move the following recommendations to Cabinet that we endorse that the regeneration projects within Tamworth remains a priority for spending for the strategic elements of SIL. Also that a further £6,208 be added to the neighbourhood projects budget for 2022-23. And finally, the draft infrastructure funding statement in Appendix A be approved for publication to the Council's website. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Uh, Councillor Clements, you have a recommendation from Infrastructure Safety and Growth Committee. Uh, thank you, Chair. I've got I've actually got two. Um, the first one is that Cabinet regular, regularly review how to spend the funds accumulated um, because we were told there was an, an underspend that, it, that the SIL hadn't been spent and the process for member involvement and the spend of SIL is clarified by the relevant portfolio holder and obviously Councillor Dorr was at that meeting. And if I can just quickly go through, um, the clarification was sought in the following areas. Whether SIL funds could be used to provide additional EV charging points in council-owned housing developments. We've just completed two housing developments on the carrier, 
and on Tinkers Green, and that's that sill could have been used for infrastructure of EV chargers. Um, and whether the sill funds accumulated could be allocated to town centre regeneration projects in the future. Um, so those are the two recommendations, Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Clements. Uh, any cabinet members have any comments relating to Councillor Dawes' paper or to Councillor Clements's sorry, inf infrastructure safety and growth committee's recommendations? Councillor Dawes. Uh, I'd just like to add to that that um, after that meeting I had a discussion with officers and asked them to look at how we could uh, construct a process where members can put forward ideas uh, to access, access that funding. Okay, thank you. So, um, so, so what you're suggesting there is that uh, the, the prior to having the recommendation, you responded to the comment. You're, you're responding to the comments in the in the committee and and, and taking up on, on those. Yeah, I've been proactive. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so, so in in that case, uh, on on hearing that, Councillor Doyle, uh, you you've got the recommendations in the report, uh, the the three recommendations. Um, would you be happy to add the two recommendations that inf uh, infrastructure safety and growth have brought to us this evening uh, that the the uh, the fund is regularly reviewed uh, and that uh, uh, and the spend of of, of sill is clarified going forward happy for the first one for the second one um, to we state that we will uh, create a process where members uh, under the right criteria can apply for funding. Yes, yeah, so if we add that, if we add that to the recommendation, uh, add that to the motion, that will satisfy the request of, of ISAG. Okay. Yep. Okay. In that case, uh, have you moved those? Yes. Excellent. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Cook seconds. Uh, any further comments from cabinet? Uh, okay, that's been moved and seconded. All those in favour? Okay, that is unanimously carried. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time this evening, Councillor Clements. You are free to leave. However, you are more than welcome to stay for the other six, the 15 items on the agenda. Okay, so we will now to return to the agenda uh, as, as printed. Uh, and this is item six, which is the quarter two performance report. Uh, this is the, uh, the the look back at performance over the, the second quarter of the year, uh, and uh, co covers all the details, including the major projects. Uh, this went to corporate scrutiny a couple of weeks ago, uh, where we had some questions of clarity, and I'll call Councillor uh, Councillor Jay in in a moment to uh, to reflect on corporate scrutinies. Uh, thoughts uh, on, on that process. Uh, cabinet members, you're all aware of what's going on in your portfolio, so you're all aware of the situation uh, in terms of the quarter two performance report, so I'm not going to add anything at this point. Does anybody want to add anything before I invite Councillor Jay? Okay, Councillor Jay, do you want to pick up on corporate scrutiny's work? Sure, thank you very much. Um, so we met, as I said, a couple of weeks ago on the 18th of November. We reviewed the quarter two performance report as normal. Um, all was okay in general with performance overall. There were 11 areas where we saw additional clarifications and they've uh, since been responded to. And then there were three where we felt they should specifically be brought to Cabinet's attention. Um, they are highlighted in the report and have now got answers to them. So I'll, I'll take them as read. I won't go into detail, but the three we thought Cabinet should be made aware of was mainly around um, customer services how the, and the face-to-face -face element and making sure residents know where that is and it's signposted. Um, the middle entry element and what was actually happening in the uh, future High Street Funds project for middle entry, and then around staff vacancies and managed underspends. They were the three we thought should be brought to your attention, and they have got answers for you already now in there. Um, and then, obviously, the usual recommendation at the end after the clarifications, which is the Cabinet endorsed the contents of the report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jay. I'll pick up the, the points on future High Street Fund when I, when I get to that agenda item. Uh, uh, a bit later on, uh, but I do believe, as you suggested, I do believe you've had the answers on the on the clarity of, uh, particularly the managed underspends, uh, and the and the signposting for, uh, for our face-to-face -face opportunity 
uh, whilst reception isn't open at Marmion House. Uh, so thank you for, for, for that input this evening. Any comments from Cabinet members on that? Councillor Cook. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Um, echo, obviously, the comments of scrutiny. Um, I, I, th I think it is really, really positive for this council, um, given, given the fact you know we've just been through you know a serious, some serious pandemic issues, and it looks like some of them might be starting again. Um, obviously, uh, staff have swapped the, how they work from this council to home. But looking at the quarterly performances reports over you know the course of this year, going back into last year, actually our service delivery has been maintained at a wonderful level. And I think it's just right that you know you, you especially Mr. Chairman, send the congratulations out to the staff for the hard work and the way they've adapted the conditions and kept our performance levels where we expect them to be. I think it's a superb achievement. Uh, happy to happy to pass that message back. Uh, and you, you'll all be aware that we're, you know, we, we rely we rely on our staff. If it wasn't for the staff, we wouldn't be here. Uh, and going forward, we're going to be going to be asking, you know, uh, f for those staff to make considerable changes as we implement the uh, reset and recovery uh, paper, and we look at service reviews and uh, and so on over the next couple of years. So there's a there's significant challenge ahead. But yeah, I think you're absolutely right. We've we've maintained a. a a, a good level of service, and we can see from the quarterly performance report, performance is uh, uh, it has has held up during the pandemic and through that that transitional period. Any other questions or comments from cabinet? No. In that case, thank you for your your input this evening, Councillor Jay. Uh, the recommendation is that uh, in the same way as scrutiny endorsed the report, that cabinet endorses the contents uh, of the report. Uh, I'll so move. Do I have a seconder? Anyone? Uh, Councillor Farrell. <laughs> All those in favour? Okay, this is carried. Thank you very much. And again, thank you very much, Councillor Jay. Uh, same offer as Councillor Clements. You are welcome to stay uh, for the for the rest of the agenda, uh, but you may leave if you so desire. Oh, rain check. Thanks. <laughs> Cheers. Okay, item seven on the agenda is the budget consultation. Uh, this is my report. Uh, you'll notice the recommendations are that we endorse the contents and we take into account the findings uh, along with other sources of information when we go forward into the next stage of the budget. Uh, this year, we did the budget consultation uh, in, in the methodology included in Appendix 1. However, we had an additional session with all, of, all, all councillors invited uh, to give uh, to give their views on the uh, on the consultation as well. There's some interesting comments if you look at Appendix Two, uh, which is in uh, pretty much in verbatim uh, of the comments received. Interesting comments about the vision and the direction uh, that was put out to consultation, uh, and how particularly how the town centre works and, and the function of. Uh, in terms of uh, some of the high level figures, uh, you'll notice on page 93 and 94 uh, of the pack. Uh, there's, there's some decent figures there and interesting figures there around people and place uh, and around organisational uh, priorities. Uh, so, big thing for me that jumped out uh, on the spend on services uh, is the two areas that respondents wanted to see more spend uh, were improving the economic, physical and social environment uh, sorry, yeah, so social environmental condition uh, of Tamworth and also tackling antisocial behaviour, uh, but also less spending on voluntary organisations and charities, uh, which, uh, which is interesting when we look at how we're going to engage uh, going further uh, and the key role that some of the voluntary organisations and charities have in, in delivering for, for the community. Uh, so, so it's, it's interesting how that comes back in the consultation. Um, so, I'm not going to say too much more on that. It is there for us to consider as we go through the next stages of the budget process. Uh, the next item on the agenda is an update on where we're at with the budget. Uh, I'd like to thank Linda Ram uh, for, for her involvement in this consultation uh, and move the recommendations. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Doyle seconds. Uh, I forgot to ask any comments. Councillor Cook. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it won't take too long. I, I'm actually glad you mentioned uh, that very issue. I mean, as the voluntary sector falls into my portfolio, obviously you're absolutely correct. Um, you know, 39% um, 
want to see less spend in the area of voluntary organisations and charities. Actually, I, I think maybe there's a duty for us as a council now to actually educate, um, for want of a better word, some of the residents that have answered this survey. Because what those voluntary organisations did for this town during the pandemic and how they came together and delivered so well to some really needy people needs, I think, highlighting again. Um, obviously, this is public consultation. The public have absolutely the right to say what they like. I just think there's an opportunity there for us to put something out press-wise to say, actually, the voluntary sector in town is more important than I think some people give it credit for. A uh, figure Joe gave me quite a while ago is there's nearly 7,500 volunteers in Tamworth of some description or other, which last figure I heard is actually more volunteers in just Tamworth than the whole of the rest of Staffordshire put together. It's such a crucial sector for Tamworth that I think we do need to highlight that it is more important. And certainly going forward into the future, we've learned that some of these organisations sometimes are better placed than we are to deliver some crucial services to some very vulnerable people, and we need to really look after that element. I always find these reports interesting reading. Um, ob obviously, sometimes you have to look through the figures a little bit. Perfect one there. Um, support was evident for, to be financially stable as a council, 82 82% of respondents thought we needed to be financially stable. Well, I'd like to think 100% of people would like us to be financially stable, but that's just how the figures come out. Similar to the, you know, 80% of people would like our decisions to be based on evidence and knowledge. I would like to think 100% of people, but it's just how the survey works. So we, we have to be careful how we read it sometimes. But yeah, it's crucial information, and it's information we need to be using. So thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Uh, and in terms of be, being financially stable, it's kind of the job. Yes, it's a job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it, it's what the council has to do. So whether it, whether it's a priority or not, that's it, it's yeah. kind of the job. Yeah. Uh, no, thank you very much for that. And uh, I think uh, my only other comment uh, about the voluntary sector is we need to ensure that the voluntary sector is supported to do what it does best, uh, and we need to be enabling that and make sure that as local government we don't actually get in the way of it because uh, there's, a, th 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 there's always an opportunity for local government to get in the way if it, if, if it wants to. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, we need to be clear, clear on that. Any further questions or comments on the budget consultation? Okay, I've moved it, Councillor Door seconded. All those in favour? That is carried, thank you very much. And that brings us on to the next agenda item, which is the base budget forecast. Uh, this is quite a, a, a lengthy report if you go through it. Uh, the recommendations uh, are that the technical adjustments and repriced base budget uh, and indicative budgets to 26-27 are approved uh, and you've got the uh, uh, appendices attached, that we consider uh, that consideration be given to the policy changes uh, and the capital programme as detailed in the report. Consideration is given to the planned changes in council tax housing rent for 22-23 as detailed in the report. And in compliance with the constitution of the council, uh, the, uh, the the leader the presented the budget workshop uh, to to all members and the proposals within it on the first of December, which was last night. Uh, I can confirm that we had a good attendance, and all members who were in attendance were briefed on that, and the slideshow has been circulated. So, with that, uh, I'll just do a very brief uh, position. Uh, and that is, you will all be aware uh, that in February this council approved uh, the, the current medium term financial strategy uh, and we were predicting in year five, we were predicting a £7 million shortfall at that point. And we also adopted a five year capital programme for the general fund, a five year HRA budget and a five year HRA, sorry, housing revenue account capital programme. Since then, a uh, great deal of work has taken place and there's also been other significant changes and that brings us to the budget update in front of us this evening. So I'll be very brief because the detail is in the report uh, and I recommend if you've got the time, all people, uh, anyone interested should, should read this. Uh, but additional balances uh, than those forecast uh, in terms of an underspend of 1.25 million, uh, million pounds has been realised. Ongoing savings this year in terms of managed underspend uh, is uh, is looking at £800,000 uh, uh, underspend. Additional properties in terms of Bandy council tax base uh, and this is due to a number of reasons both physically new properties being built uh, but also uh, the number of properties who applied for council tax reductions 
was lower than we had predicted. We had predicted that to be slightly higher due to furlough and due to the uh, uh, unemployment situation and the uh, impact of the pandemic. That wasn't realised, so as a result, we didn't get the, the, the level of applications that, that, we'd, that we'd budgeted for. Uh, so there's an extra uh, £53,000 uh, in, in, in there. Reset and Recovery Workstream, uh, which is the predominantly uh, the decommissioning of Marmion House, that decision we made, uh, and that is looking at saving £1.1 million over the next five years. However, as I referred to earlier when I was uh, responding to Councillor Cook, uh, the Reset and Recovery Workstreams will be producing other impacts on the budget. Uh, there may be some short-term costs uh, and longer-term savings, uh, but they will come out in addition to that £1.1 million pound saving from, from moving from, predominantly from moving from, from Marmion House. And we've also uh, got a number of policy changes detailed in the report, which come to a, a, an impact on the budget of a, an additional £2.2 .2 million pounds in cost over the five years. Uh, the budget, uh, the paper in front of us uh, does go into uh, the impact of the spending review, uh, does go into what we know and what we don't know uh, from government uh, in terms of business rates, uh, in terms of business rate reset, uh, in, in terms of other uh, things like the fair funding review and the uncertainty around that uh, and the uncertainty around uh, new homes bonus uh, and also goes into a bit of detail in terms of the reset and recovery paper. So all in all, what that gives us now uh, in the, in, in the, uh, uh, in the medium term financial strategy is if we look at a, a central case, we need to find around 1.7 million pound to balance over, over the three year period, uh, with a shortfall of 5.4 million in year four, which was the old year five, which was 7 million. Uh, so that's a, a 1.6 million pound, uh, improvement. Uh, however, that extends to £9.3 million in five, year five, which is generally the position we're in in December, November e e each year. Uh, if we don't get any surprises and we don't get business rate reset uh, and we don't get a fairer funding review uh, and some of the other things that, uh, that the government uh, are holding in abeyance at the moment, uh, the best case scenario at the moment is we've actually got a £2.3 uh, million pound surplus over three years, uh, but that's still generates a shortfall over five years of £6 million currently in, in the general fund. Uh, HRA, uh, we're looking at balances of £1 million uh, in, in year three and a shortfall of £1.2 in year five. So the Cabinet will consider what is in this report as we go forward in setting the budget. Uh, we will also consider the budget consultation that we have just discussed. Uh, the policy changes are included in this report. Uh, which are being considered and each one of those will be refined worked on and a decision will be made whether they're in the final budget or not as we come closer to it uh, and in the commitment uh, to engage all members we will have a joint budget scrutiny uh, which will be in january february time before the full council considers uh, the, the final budget going forward so with that i'll move the recommendations uh, one to four uh, and i'll look for a seconder uh, Councillor Bailey and ask Cabinet do you have any questions or comments on the base budget forecast? Councillor Cook. Yeah, thank you Mr Chairman. Uh, I, I, th I think it would be right of me to say that obviously as me and you have discussed a few times uh, when I ceased to be leader in February I left you a £7 million pound hole and it's absolutely pleasing to see how hard you and the finance team have worked to get that going in the right direction. So it's just a heartily uh, from myself to say well done and let's keep up the good work collectively as a cabinet and senior officers and all members of this council. It, it is correct that you know we, we need to have a balanced budget. But as, as we know, and you, you'll agree with Mr Chairman, we've practically looked at the same budget for practically the last eight years. It balances in three years, it goes slightly adrift in year four, and then it goes all hell, haywire in year five. And it's been practically the same budget for about eight, eight runs. But our wonderful finance team do tend to sort these problems in year, and we can absolutely trust them to continue that work and sort it in year. So anyone who thinks when we approve these papers that's the job done, it isn't. The work goes on and on and on. So just a, a thank you from me, Mr Chairman, for the work you've put in to get this going absolutely the right direction from what I left you. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you for leaving that £7 million pound hole, Councillor Cook. Um, no, I think you're absolutely right, and I think the, the report highlights the, the, the managed underspends and how our finance team 
don't don't let anything slip. And if there's a if there's a couple of pence left on the desk, they'll have it before before anybody else can can spend it elsewhere. Uh, so no, I uh, endorse your comments about the support that the the finance team uh, do give us. Uh, and you're absolutely right. This is a this is a constant piece of work. It isn't a, a there's your budget, you know, scribble down off you go. It's uh, it's constantly under review. Uh, and that's why we, we have the quarterly performance report, and that's why that goes to, to scrutiny as well. But no, thank you very much. Uh, any further questions or comments? Okay, that's been moved and seconded. All those in favour? That is unanimous as well. That is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, and I think this brings us on to the future High Street Fund update, which I think is my last report for the evening. Um, future High Street Fund uh, update is in front of you. This went through... Uh, infrastructure safety and growth uh, recently uh, so the key things uh, just to just to highlight is the procurement exercise has now been completed and we have McBain's as our lead consultant uh, the benefits you'll see from that is they're a uh, they, they will be dealing with a multitude of things at the same time uh, so the projects have been quite linear so far and we've been going through a process now we have that lead consultant on board uh, we can be we can run a number of different work streams uh, at the same time, so so the public will start to see uh, so some physical action uh, as we as we get closer to to actually putting uh, plan applications in uh, and even a spade in the ground at some point. Uh, so so you'll see an acceleration in the project going forward. Now we have that consultant. Uh, on that consultant, the college uh, have also gone out to procure their lead consultant. Uh, in terms of their uh, their proposed move and their build, uh, and they have also appointed McBain's. They were two independent processes. We did ours, the college did theirs separately, uh, but uh, McBain's applied for both of those and got them both. The key thing that jumps out in terms of uh, one of the reasons why uh, McBain's was successful uh, was that their response to our tender request was a very localized very specific response it wasn't a generic response that we that we got from from some of the other uh, app applicants or, or tenderers um so if i may very briefly uh touch on a few a few points the college uh part of the element of the project uh was uh, was successful in the first round of funding uh, in terms of getting that project uh to a stage where they could bid for a second round that bid was submitted on the 7th of October. Uh, it was submitted ahead of the deadline. Uh, so that is going through as we speak. So we're anticipating feedback on that early in the uh, in the new year. However, the works around uh, legal agreements, heads of terms with the co-op uh, for our acquisition of that site uh, are, are in process and we expect that to be concluded uh, in, in this, this financial year so we can take possession of uh, of the co-op site itself and that also means we can start work on the enterprise center which is for those who don't know the old part of the co-op building the bit that faces onto coal hill uh, and looks quite nice and pretty so so we'll be able to get 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 started on work on the on the enterprise center once we've once we've got ownership of that building uh, part of that deal is uh it's obviously we purchased the, that that site uh, and you'll notice that the buildings opposite uh, the co-op, opposite the, the Hayes Travel uh, area, which also belong to the co-op, are being refurbished and they're bring, being brought into uh, back up to scratch and brought back into use. So that's a, a, a secondary benefit from uh, from the Future Street Fund project uh, that isn't directly funded by, by the project itself or form part of the project. So middle entry, uh, discussions are ongoing with the owners of middle entry uh, around vacant possession. Uh, it is up to them uh, as owners to deal with their tenants uh, in, in an appropriate way uh, so we can take vacant possession of the properties uh, t uh, to the uh, to the south of uh, uh, of middle entry uh, going around the corner so we can open up that space uh, in the suggested way uh, we've had a few uh, niggles on the route uh, but we've worked with the owners of middle entry to uh, to work through that uh, and heads of terms have been agreed with with the peer group uh, the Castle Gateway positive discussions are continuing uh, with the business affected by the uh, the Castle Gateway proposal. Uh, again, one of those is a discussion between us and a tenant in one of our properties, uh, and that's uh, that's uh, been successfully proceeding. Uh, the nationwide 
Uh, we have a heads of term agreement with the Peel Cafe. There is a particular issue that we have to deal with uh, with that, and that's uh, that's something we have to deal with prior to uh, prior to the nationwide taking on that property. Uh, so so work is is progressing well on that. Um, we all know in terms of engagement and communications, Councillor Cook and myself went to the assembly rooms on the 13th of October. Uh, we had around, uh, I think it was around 50 people there, which were local businesses that operate in the town centre. Very successful engagement, exercise, some good questions, uh, some a, a very open-minded approach uh, from the businesses. Since then, I've had a couple of wanders around the town centre and spoke to a number of people who attended that session. Uh, and generally, there is a, uh, a, a really positive feel uh, and a willingness to, to engage. Uh, and there's also an understanding that as and when we've got detail, we can feed that, uh, feed, feed that to them. Uh, and we're also starting, I think we started today, uh, we're starting the drop-in sessions at the Enterprise Centre uh, for local businesses, to, uh, for town centre businesses to have one-to-one uh, -one discussions uh, with our team about what the project means to them and the impact on, on their particular business. So that's in a nutshell where we're at. Uh, we do have two new members of staff which are starting, uh, if you remember, went out to uh, uh, went out at the start of the year uh, to, to employ two, two officers uh, to lead on the project. Uh, we were unsuccessful with one of them at the time and the other one was an internal uh, application. Uh, that person uh, is uh, is now leaving the authority for a, a better job somewhere else, uh, but we've been successful in in recruiting to both both of those vacancies, uh, and the person who's leaving is offered to come back in their own time to give a proper handover. Uh, so so we, we we should have some continuity and uh, and start to to drive forward. I think I've covered the main bases. It's all in the report. Uh, any questions or comments from cabinet members? Councillor Farrell. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just a comment to say uh, how exciting this is. I'm always excited when I talk about the Future High Street Fund. I was actually in St Edward's Square this uh, past weekend for the light switch on, and a member of the public asked me about it, genuinely, and I said, I told them all about it, and they were excited, and they actually said, oh, I'd, I'd love to see some you know, plans and see pictures, and I explained that that would happen. So it's really exciting, really good news that businesses can drop in and talk about uh, what it means for them. Um, we should be celebrating this as we are. Um, so I'm really excited and also pleased to see it's on track because you know various different delays at the moment with COVID and Brexit, etc. Good to see this is on track. Really pleased about the um, appointment of the two officers. Uh, wish them the best of luck uh, and excited for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Farrell. Any further questions or comments? Uh, one thing I, I didn't add uh, that I've spoke to uh, the project team about is following that event on the 13th, uh, I was having a conversation and we were talking about the getting the message out in the way that Councillor Farrell's just described and answering questions. We have a website, we have the Transforming Tamworth website which gives all the details. Uh, the conversation I've had with the, with the project team is we need to promote that website it's great having it, but if no one knows where to look, then it then it's pointless. Uh, so so expect some uh, some physical signage uh, and postering going on around the town centre to to draw people's attention to that website and uh, and get that information that the, that they currently desire. So so yeah, that's something that we we took out of that uh, that engagement exercise. Any further qu questions or comments? Okay, the recommendation is that we note the progress and we will receive a further update in uh, at, at the next quarter at the appropriate time. So happy to move that we note that. All those in favour? Oh no, we need a seconder. Castle Door seconded. All those in favour? Okay, that is carried. Thank you very much. And it's now time for item 10 on the agenda, which is the temporary reserves, retained funds and provisions, and that's the portfolio holder for finance and customer services, Councillor Bailey. Thank you, Chair. Firstly, thank you to Limpew for uh, putting the report together. The report is to advise members on the levels of reserves and to seek approval to repurpose unspent reserves following the recent review by the Executive Director of Finance. The main thing to note is that any balances returned help to reduce the current predicted deficit on the MTFS. The recommendations are to approve £145,370 of reserve are returned to the general fund balance, 10,000 of reserves are returned to the HR, HRA balances and to note that the current levels of reserves are remaining. I'm happy to move, thank you. 
Thank you, Councillor Bailey, and uh, and the detail on those reserves in Appen Appendix A, isn't it? Uh, okay. Any comments from Cabinet? No. It's statement of fact. Yeah. Uh, did you say you'd move that, Councillor Bailey? I did. Uh, in that case, do we have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Cook was in there first. Uh, so, if there are no further questions or comments, uh, I'll take it to the vote. All those in favour? Okay, that is unanimous. That is carried. Thank you very much. We next have the Treasury Management Strategy Statement and Annual Investment Strategy Mid-Year Review Report 21-22. Councillor Bailey. Thank you, Chair. The report represents to members the mid-year review of the Treasury Management Strategy Statement and Annual Investment Strategy. The report complies with the requirements of SIPFA, which is the Code of Practice on Treasury Management, reporting Treasury activities to, mem to members at least twice a year, but we try and do it quarterly. We report separately twice on the outturn report in July and this half yearly report in December. We also report Treasury activities in the Health Check Report quarterly to Cabinet. The main issues to note are the Council complied with the Professional Code, Statutes and Guidance. There are no issues to report regarding non-compliance with the approved prudential indicators. The investment portfolio yield, excluding property fund returns for the first six months of the year is, is 0.026% compared to the three-month LIBID benchmark of negative 0.043%. This reflects the continuing low interest rate environment. The aim of this report is to inform members of the Treasury and investment management issues to enable all members to have ownership and understanding when making decisions on Treasury management matters. Training on Treasury management issues would, was delivered to members in November 2019, with training on the corporate capital strategy in February 2020, and further training is planned in February 2022. The, approval, the approved limits within the annual investment strategy have not been breached during the six months to September 2021. The report also includes a brief update with regards to our property fund investments following the recent property fund review and subsequent approval to invest the remaining £8 million. At the end of October 2021, we invested a further £4 million with Threadneedle Property Unit Trust and four million and fifty six thousand with Hermes Federated Property Unit. It's recommended to approve the Treasury Management Strategy Statement and Annual Investment Strategy Mid Year Review Report 2021-2022. Happy to move. Thank you, Councillor Bailey. Uh, any questions or comments on the report itself? Okay, I only have one point. Uh, the recommendation as printed, uh, am I on the right report? Yeah, Treasury Management, yeah. Uh, the recommendation as printed is that the Council be requested to approve the Treasury Management Strategy Statement for Annual Investment Strategy Mid-Year Review Report 2122. That will go to full Council on the 14th of December. So the recommendation uh, from this, uh, from, from Cabinet, really should be that cabinet recommends to, ca to council that they uh, that they approve the treasury management uh, strategy uh, so so if we move that as a recommendation that that gives cabinet's endorsement uh, for, for for council to to be requested to approve so if we just insert that into the motion then then that covers that off okay so any yeah <laughs> yeah it's uh, yeah it's uh, it's where we we take the report to both both places you just need to sort it out in the motion uh councillor cook yeah just just to agree mr chairman absolutely it's for this cabinet to uh, agree this report but then go ask council to approve it because it does need council approval in 13 days time so yeah i think you're absolutely right in what you're saying there thank you okay so if we amend that to uh that that cabinet cabinet recommends the council that they approve it yeah so we'll change that Okay, so you're happy to move that with the amendment? Yeah, happy to move with the amendment. Okay, any questions or comments or a seconder? Councillor Cook seconds. All those in favour? Thank you very much. And once again, thank you to the staff for the work they do around Treasury management. Item 12 on the agenda is the council tax base. Uh, Councillor Bailey. Thank you, Chair. The council tax base 22... 2022-23 report 
is the calculation of the council tax base is a statutory requirement to inform the council's budgeted setting process and that of our council tax preceptors. It has been calculated as 22,968, which is an increase of 602 bandy equivalent since last year. The current year collection rate dropped to 97.4%, which is due to the effects of the pandemic. However, current levels indicate that collection should be back to the anticipated pre-pandemic levels. The recommendation to approve is that Tamworth Borough Council resolves its calculation of the council tax base for the year of 2022-23 to be 22,968. Happy to move. Okay, thank you. Do I have any questions or comments on that? Okay, that's been moved. I'm happy to second that. All those in favour? Okay, that is carried as well. Thank you very much. Local Council Tax Reduction Scheme 22-23. Councillor Bailey. As members will be aware, a review of the cur current council tax reduction scheme was planned during 2020, with the aim to finalise a new scheme for consultation that autumn. However, in light of the impact of the pandemic on the scheme, the review was postponed until 2021. It is now suggested that the review be postponed until 2022, when the situation will be clearer. As such, no changes to the current scheme are recommenda recommended. This approach was considered and approved by corporate scrutiny on the 25th of August 2020 and Cabinet on the 10th of September 2020 and Council on the 15th of December 2020. The proposal was to replace the current traditional scheme for working age claimants, which was modelled in 2012, based on the National Council tax benefit and has had various amendments made annually to continue to align to legislation changes in housing benefit. The national scheme regulations continue for pensioners which mirror the obsolete council tax benefit scheme. There are two recommendations to approve. One, that council consider and endorse or otherwise the proposed recommended changes which are detailed below. Two, that the planned review for the introduction of a banding scheme for council tax reduction be deferred until 2022 and that the current scheme for working age customers continues to be aligned to applicable amounts with those of housing benefits for 2022-23. Happy to move, thank you. Okay, thank you. If I may, uh, same points as I made on the last one, uh, that, that that Cabinet recommends this okay. to Council in terms of it, in terms of our decision uh, this evening. Any questions or comments from Cabinet? Councillor Cook. Just so I understand this report correctly, Mr Chairman, um, there are no changes to last year's scheme. It's, we've consulted with the public. Well, technically, if there's no changes, we've consulted two years running with the public. So, obviously, we've consulted with the public. There's no proposed changes to what Council approved last year. So I think let's just get on with it. Absolutely. I think it's a statement of fact at that point. Thank you very much, Councillor Cook. I, I tend to agree. Uh, and I think in terms of the, the delaying uh, or the deferral, the, the world we're living at at the, mo in, at the moment uh, has led us down that, that route, and we, we still need to understand the, the, the impact of the pandemic on, on our day-to-day -day life. So, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Any further questions or comments from Cabinet? No, okay. Councillor Bailey has moved uh, the recommendation and will insert the words that Cabinet recommends this to, to Council. Uh, seconder, Councillor Cook. All those in favour? That is carried as well. Thank you very much. Right offs, 1st of April to the 30th of September. <coughs> Councillor Bailey. Thank you, Chair. This is the quarterly update report and details the debt written off for quarter two of the 2021-22 financial year. Council tax, £4,469.48. Business rates, zero write-off. Sundry income, £802.72. Housing benefit over payments, £9,054.62. Housing, £67,526.64. Write-offs are not comparable levels to the previous year in respect of council tax and business rates. However, the revenues team have reported sound income collection performance for the period, which is you know which is great given the current circumstances. Whilst reported collection rates are marginally ahead of target, at the moment it is still too early to know what effect the pandemic will ultimately have on the economy and residents' ability to pay in the future. It should also be noted that collection levels for prior year debts have returned close to normal levels. 
In terms of the debt written back onto the accounts, there are a number of scenarios whereby if we receive positive information, we will pursue the debt, again, even if it's been written off previously. This is our duty as we are accountable to all the council tax rate payers and business payers in Tamworth. The pandemic has affected people in a number of ways and many of our customers continue to be financially impacted by the crisis, but it should be noted that at present, we would not consider the write-off debts unless we have pursued them to the fullest extent and as a last resort. The write-offs detailed in the report are the exception and, and the very last resort where debt cannot be collected due to bankruptcy, for example. The Council is committed to ensuring that debt write-offs are kept to a minimum by taking all reasonable steps to collect the monies due. There will be situations where the debt recovery process fails to recover some or all of the debt and will need to be considered for write-off in accordance with the schemes of delegation prescribed in the corporate credit policy. You would have noticed that there are no write-offs for business rates at the moment as the revenues department is working with businesses to try to work out suitable arrangements to pay off debts accumulated as a result of the pandemic. Likewise, the same principle applies for both council tax and sundry income balances and at present write-offs are not significant at this, at this stage. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bailey. Uh, I think the, the important thing for, for, for members and the public to look at are the appendices uh, because that does explain uh, in, in reasonable detail why, why these are non-recoverable uh, and why we're going to, to write those off. Any questions or comments from Cabinet? No? Okay, the recommendation has been moved. Do I have a second? Councillor Doyle seconds. All those in favour? That is unanimous. That's carried. Thank you very much. Item 15. The appointment of external auditor. Councillor Bailey. Thank you, Chair. The report advises members of the options, processes and legislative requirement to appoint external auditors for the accounting periods from 2023 to 2024 and seeks member endorsement of the recommended option for subsequent Cabinet and Council approval. Local authorities are required under legislation to appoint their own external auditors for the accounts from 2023 to 2024 and this decision has to be made by full Council. The Local Audit and Accountability Act 2014 requires local authorities to decide between opting from one of the following two options available, which is as, as detailed in, a, in the report, namely option one, to utilise public sector audit appointments under the appointing persons regime, local audit regulations 2015, or option two, which would mean undertaking our own procurement exercise. Option one, outlined above, provides the most cost-effective option and provides for greater opportunity in achieving lower audit base fee due to economies of scale. The costs of undertaking our own procurement exercise would be higher than using the PSAA route. It should be noted that until the procurement exercise has been completed, it would not be possible to identify the financial impact of the process and audit fees of 2023-2024. The main risks to the authority are Failure to appoint an auditor and not achieving VFM in the appointment process. These risks are considered best mitigated by opting into the sector-led approach through PSAA. In addition, the process set out in the report and the recommendation should ensure compliance with the Local Audit and Accountability Act of 2014. The procurement process is for a contract of five years. A decision to become an opted-in authority must be taken in accordance with the regulations and by full council. If we decide to join the scheme, we must inform PSAA by returning the form of acceptance no later than midnight on the 11th of March 2022. The LGA has provided further information and this is attached in the report as Appendix 1. This provides detailed arguments in respect of the procurement ex exercise which applied in 2017. The recommendations are 1. The Cabinet recommends to Council that the authority opts into the appointing person arrangement made by public sector audit appointment for the appointment of external auditors and that the Executive Director of Finance confirms our interest in undertaking the opt-in appointing process following ratification by Council and has delegated powers in relation to the appointing process. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bailey. Any questions or comments from Cabinet? 
No. Okay. Councillor Bailey has moved the recommendation uh, and in already inserted the additional wording uh, around cabinet rec <laughs> recommending to council. Uh, so, do I have a seconder? Anyone? Councillor Doyle. Uh, all those in favour? That is unanimous. That's carried. Thank you very much. Uh, and that brings us on to item 17 on the agenda, which is the revised private sector housing enforcement fees and charging policy. And this is uh, portfolio audit for regulatory and community safety. Councillor Doyle. Councillor Doyle, can you flip your mic on? Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mr Chairman, <laughs> for that as well. I'd first like to thank Joe Sands for creating the report. The purpose of this report is to brief and seek approval of the updates and combined private sector housing enforcement fees and charging policy that has been circulated to Cabinet members. The updated and revised private sector housing enforcement fees and charging policy is up has updated our approach to key areas of work and has been incorporated into one document that replaces the previous policies found in the enforcement houses in multiple occupation and, and the housing and planning act policies for 2016. The primary enforcement role of the strategic housing team is to maintain and improve the housing conditions in Tamworth. I would note that this excludes properties owned by the council. The team endeavoured to achieve this goal through advice, information and assistance to private landlords and tenants. Where this approach fails or is not appropriate it, and it is necessary to protect the health, safe, safety and welfare of persons, then a team will take the appropriate enforcement action. The aim of the updated policy is to set out the criteria and pri priorities a team will use when enforcing relevant legislation so it is transparent and clear to all set out our policy in respect of charges that may be imposed for enforcement and regulation, ensure our, inf our enforcement is consistent, fair, uh, proportionate and targeted, ensure it is consistent with the aims and objectives contained in the corporate enforcement policy and good practice guidance. The enforcement policy covers a number of functional areas which are detailed in the actual report itself. So I move the following recommendations to the Cabinet that we approve the updated private sector housing enforcement fees and charging policy and also endorse the annual reporting to the house house and homeless subcommittee on the use of appropriate powers and outcomes for private sector tenants in tamworth thank you mr chairman thank you councillor doyle any questions or comments councillor farrell Thank you, Chair. Uh, just to say, as the uh, Chair of the Housing and Homelessness uh, Subcommittee, I'd like to uh, welcome this and invite Councillor Doyle um, to uh, join us annually to discuss this policy. So thank you. OK, I have a slight governance challenge uh, around this at the moment, and that is that the Housing and Homelessness Committee is currently meeting in shadow form as it's not been adopted into the Constitution as yet. So uh, th there's nothing wrong with the recommendation, but we just need to be aware that that needs uh, that committee needs to be adopted into the constitution in order to in order for this uh, recommendation to to be achieved, uh, and that's going to be as part of the constitution review. Uh, so I'd suggest that in the interim, we would just refer to that as the uh, uh, as as operating in, in shadow form uh, f for the time being. By the time you get to the annual report, it will be in full form, but at the minute it's not in, in, in the Constitution. Councillor Doyle. Can we just put forthcoming? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that will, that will suffice, yeah. And I'll be proactive and I'll put a date in the diary for uh, 12 months' time. <laughs> Excellent. Any further questions or comments? No? Okay, so you've moved that uh, with, with the insertion of the word. Uh, Councillor Farrell? Uh, Councillor Farrell is seconding. All those in favour? That's unanimous as well. Thank you very much. And I believe that concludes our agenda this evening. Thank everybody for their input and thank the officers uh, for the work they've done in preparing this, this evening's meeting. And I will close the meeting now. Thank you very much. <laughs>